Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville YouTube channel. We're going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to do a how-to video. Never done one before, mostly because I don't know how to do anything. But what you're looking at is a stand-up hair dryer, a beehive hair dryer. I picked this up at an auction about a week or two ago. and I paid one dollar for it. This is the third one that I've owned. And we're going to convert it into a floor lamp. Um, the last two I did sell and I paid a dollar for the first one I bought, I paid a dollar for this one, and the one in the middle I paid seven dollars for. I got all these over the last year so if anyone's thinking that there's no chance you'll ever find one, uh, I've actually seen five this year and I just bought three of them because the other ones actually went for quite a bit of money. Um, I'm gonna list this thing for probably 150 bucks and see where it goes from there. That's what the switch looks like on this one. They're all a little different but essentially work the same. It's got off cold which is just the fan warm and then hot so we're gonna have to take out the blower motor and the heating element and replace it with a light socket and that's what the inside looks like you can kind of see the fan in there so what you're gonna need for this what I, all I believe you're gonna need for this is some wire connectors you can also use like wire nuts if you have that some wire strippers or crimping crimping tools some side cutters, a screwdriver, and here I have a light socket. Um, this came off a gooseneck table lamp. It's got the little switch on the back and there's a nut right here. Plastic nut that you can take off and that's how I'm going to mount it. Uh, you can use any kind of socket if you buy like a little kit from a hardware store or something. Um, so yeah, that's all I think we're going to need. If we need anything else, I'll be grabbing it, but I've only done this a couple other times, so let's see how it goes. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to have to do is take off this top cone. You can see there's regular screws. There's three of them in there. So let's get doing that first. I know you guys hate this camera because it has a background noise, but it's the only thing I have that I can put on a tripod, and I'm not going to hold this thing. Even though I'm listing this one for 150, I sold the other ones for 100 or 125. I actually have a video of one that's the same design as this. It was like a 10 second video I put in the listing. You can see my old videos of how that one worked. But um, this one might get a little bit less because someone's repainted it. They painted over the um, label. And the bottom's a little scratched up. One thing about this particular model that's kind of a poor design is if you can see, hopefully you can see, where this bracket is right here. It's really weak and just the weight of this head, if you turn the lamp sideways or the hair dryer sideways, it'll actually bend that bracket. It's really weak. Also you saw the metal post on this thing and um, the stand, the pedestal for it. It's actually got a spring inside there and it's spring loaded and can go up and down. This one's kind of stuck right now so I'm going to have to look into it. Another thing was I was going to show you guys this thing working before I got too far. So I do want to turn it on. You guys can probably hear that. Before I get any farther, I want to unplug it so I don't get electrocuted. Alright, see what you guys can see. Alright, so we're going to take this little cap off. You can see all the different wires coming from the switch. And you got a couple wires going to the motor here. So we're going to disconnect that wire. That is a... that cap just fell off. Eh, we don't know now because all the wires fell off. But. 
and disconnect the other two, take the whole thing off. We'll figure out wiring the switch later. The last one I did, it ended up being that off and low were off once it became a lamp, and then high and medium were on with the lamp. From here, you have more just regular screws. There's one up here. It looks like that's it. Let's see how it comes off after I get that one out. There's your heating element fan. We have to take all this apart now. It's kind of a pain. I forgot about this part. You turn these. And this pops right out. So each one of these turn. Pop out. That's the heating element. And then we need to disconnect the motor, which of course uses nuts, and I didn't bring any kind of a wrench. So let's stop this and I'll get a wrench. Alright, guys, forget the wrench, the uh, little wire strippers I had. We're good enough to take this off. Um, one thing I forgot. Because this fan is a real pain in the butt to take off. Essentially just break it to pieces to get it off. Get those nuts off. Put this other one that doesn't want to come off. It's just spinning. So the motor's loose, and your problem now is to get the stinking fan off of it. Um, someone might know a better way of doing this than me, but I'm going to probably break this top off. As you can see, it's pretty flexible. Pops that off. Now you got this dealy going into the motor. Yeah, I'm going to try a little Dremel grinder, which you might not have, but you could break this thing. That's all you really need to do is break the stinking shaft. That's right there. So let's try that. Alright guys, so we're going to try and cut the shaft on this motor. I just fell off. And um, I got this lovely little Dremel with a grinder thing on it. And by lovely I mean crappy because the switch is gone. So I just had to hardwire it. So as soon as you plug it in, it's uh, on and you have no speed control. So that's just a great thing. It's a little bent. Oh yeah, that's gonna work great.
wondering, yeah, that's getting really hot. And um, if you're smart, you'd wear safety glasses when doing this. I'm not, so I'm not. This gets tricky. Good enough. Use these guys. Pop that off. And there's our plate we need back. It's motor. It's copper in it for scrappers. Take the copper out of it, do whatever you want. So there's my plate. I'll take the socket, unscrew the nut that's on the back of it. I don't have to worry about it having a switch on it. We're just going to leave that switch on all the time. Whatever's the on position, that's where we'll leave it. Um, if you have a socket where the post comes in the side, you can just make sure it's on and then unscrew that post and leave it off. This goes on. This goes on with these tabs going to the inside. So we need and of course this hole's not big enough. This hole here is smaller than that there. So we gotta get a drill bit, drill that hole out. See I knew I'd need up needing more tools than I thought. We'll grab that and we'll be right back. Alright, so here we are with my cordless. Got a drill bit on it. Just got to drill out this hole here. <coughs> oh, dead battery. Are you kidding me? crazy. Alright, I have some nice metal shavings laying here. And this needs to go this way. You can see that hopefully. Alright, so we're good to go. I'm going to just run this cord through one of these holes. Light mounted there. Let's see if it's a little tighter. And I'm gonna reposition the camera so you guys can see this thing. Alright, you guys can see there's a screen mesh inside there. 
Yeah, mesh. So anyways, that's got to come out because people won't be able to change the light bulb and the light bulb is going to hit that. Uh, you can either... The mesh is connected to a wire like rim. Right there, see to the left there, that rim, it's kind of spot welded there. So you can use some cutters to cut that mesh out. Or there's three legs that are holding the whole ring together inside there. And I'm going to just try and disconnect the whole thing there. Let's see how that works. Get in there and pull on it. And I sure hope it would break easier than this. I really don't care what those legs look like inside there. Alright, plan B. Alright guys, so I got me a pair of pin snips here. Um, you can probably get your little grinder in there if you use that to disconnect the motor. Uh, since mine doesn't have a switch and it's always on, I'm just waiting to cut myself with the damn thing. So these tin snips will work easy enough, hopefully. And we can clean up those little legs later. We can take them completely out or just hammer them flat so you don't see them in there. But, Alright, so that's our little ring just came out. Now it's got a hollow cone sitting in there. We need to mount our socket. Right there, a little hole up here. Hopefully you kept your screws. We're gonna need them. So we're all mounted, all we have to do is do the wiring. Strip this wire here. Little pigtail end that I got. If you use a regular socket that you buy at like a hardware store, there's a cap that comes off the bottom and a screw on either side and one wire goes to one side one wire goes to the other so in that case you're going to need a little bit of wire or if there's enough extra wire on this thing you can use that too I don't know which wires to use exactly yet so we're doing a little guessing and checking and I also don't know if my switch is on or off so we're going to test that Scrap wire from an old light or fan or something. But it's got an outlet end on it. So we put these together temporarily. Don't want them to touch each other after it's plugged in. But safety first, right? Thing, I'm sure you've already noticed that I haven't done yet is I need to put a light bulb in it. Grab a light bulb. 
Alright guys, so my camera messed all <clears throat> messed that last video all up. Um, it said it was recording, but when I transferred it to my computer, the file was empty. It was a zero megabyte file, and um, it wasn't on the camera either. So I'm just going to tell you what I did. I went and got a light bulb, found where the ons part made so the switch was on, and then I did the wiring part, and looking at that hair dryer, there's six wires total, and you have two cords, the power cord coming from the wall, and the cord coming from the switch. And within that, there's six total wires. Two of them are black, and this is just my model. Your guys' might be different. Um, I know I've had one of them in the past where all the wires were black, and that sucked. But um, if you have black wires, the two black wires go together. You're going to connect those two. Then you need to find what other wires are going to complete your circuit. So for me, there was also a red and green wire that did nothing for my purposes. So I cut those and capped them. The other two wires were both yellow. And I connected one yellow wire to one side of my socket, the other yellow wire to the other side of my socket, and that made my switch work so that off and low were off for the lamp, and medium and high were on for the lamp. If you're good with electrical or if you have some electrical testers, there's probably an easier way to figure out which wire is which. Excuse me, but um, I was just guessing and checking. Just try this wire. That didn't work. Try this wire. But you're definitely going to put those two black wires together. So that's all that you missed. Um, now we'll go back into the video like it was supposed to be. Sorry about that. Alright guys, so what I did was on the yellow wire I cut the outer sheathing all the way down to the bottom and just wrapped it in electrical tape. Um, the other two wires, I cut them off and then wrapped them together just so they can't touch anything. And we're going to put this extra wire in here. Uh, my ding, if you're wondering, was a Columbia uh, vest, full zip vest, sold for $17. And you missed a second ding, that was a pair of Levi's, sold for 12 Hopefully you guys hear another ding before this is all over. So all we do is we put our cap back on. We put the screws back in. Maybe. This crappy screwdriver fits on here. I can find. three holes lined up, put these screws back in, and you are going to have a floor lamp. These are really kind of a pain in the butt to ship. It's a big item and it's heavy. The last two I sold I did sell on eBay and had to ship them. I'll list this one locally. You can throw it in the basement or out in the garage and let it sit for a couple months. I'm really in no hurry. I only have a dollar and an hour of this video invested. Hey, who knows, maybe enough people will watch this and I'll get paid a buck for this video. Maybe it'll be free. Just be my time. The thing about being a reseller though, your time is the most important thing. But, if I can sell this for 100 bucks, 150 bucks, 75 bucks, it really doesn't matter. It'll be worth the hour it took to do this. Alright, well, so let's give it a shot, make sure this thing's still working. And that you guys can see it. We got the switch in the cool position, which is off. Remember, off is off. When I get to high, it should turn on, and it's on. Remember, warm's going to look like on too, and then cold is off. So there it is. So we can I'm going to add something so you guys can see the amount of light it's given off. You'll be better off using a reflective bulb of some sort that'll shoot all the light down instead of it getting absorbed within the dome there but it works so hopefully you guys find one of these and you're uh, ambitious enough or have the uh, desire to do this little conversion I think it looks really cool um, something really neat to do make sure to give this video a like if you're not already a subscriber subscribe to the channel 
maybe we'll do some more how-tos in the future if people liked it, if you think you got anything out of it. Otherwise, we'll definitely have more hauls, sale videos, more eBay tips. If you're not uh, a subscriber, not typically looking for that kind of stuff, check out the other videos. Maybe consider selling some things on eBay and help you out with that. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to leave comments.